Hello, my name is Tasman, the aspiring Kryptonian, and I'm with Philip Kennedy Johnson from Action Comics. Hey, it's good to see you again. And you? How's New York Comic Con been for you so far? Great, busy. Yeah. It's been, yeah, been really solid. Seen a lot of fans, shaking a lot of hands, moving a lot of books, seeing Shameless friends like yourself. Yeah, exactly. No, COVID's over. We beat it. We we won. So yeah. it's all fine now. <laughs> What does it mean to you to have the opportunity to be at an event like this with all the fans? Oh man, it's it's the best. It's such a big part of the the, the con scene. is such a big part of the comics community. I mean, a lot of it's around people's shops or the online community, but the con is such a big part of it. And I I just love getting to meet some of these people. Very sometimes I get to see somebody who has been very kind online. I've had interactions with them. Yeah. Um, you know, on you know Twitter or Instagram or wherever, and then they come to these things. So we get to talk in person, and I've named characters in my books after people that I've only known online. And sometimes I get to meet them in these these things. Oh, so cool. it's pretty dope, yeah. Um, and I think I speak for many Superman fans when I say that you get Clark and you get Superman. And the latest issue of Action Comics was perfect, where he used his sort of um, the heart and X ray vision. To as a lie detector, that was brilliant. Thanks. Um, so tell us a little bit about what's in store for Clark and the rest of the Superman family in Action Comics. Oh man, so so this arc that I'm in now, that is called uh, New Worlds. Um, <laughs> I got to be careful not to spoil because that's <laughs> people who watch this before everything is out. But um, for the fans who've been reading my work from the very beginning, um, people who know me know my work know that I hate loose threads. I want to make sure everything pays off. And there are there are stories that I have begun a long time ago that will continue in this particular arc. So anyone who's read like all my DC work up till now, um, you know, you'll be rewarded for that. You know, in in world in uh, new worlds, it's um, the last arc dealt a lot with one of the subplots that was important to me was seeing John and Osel uh, interact and kind of figure each other out a little bit. We see, we see John kind of deal with. The, the loss of those years with his family and seeing his parents connected with this kid the same age as he would have been if he'd stayed. And um, I want to see Otho Ra developed now. So we're going to see more of her in this arc okay. in a way that I'm very, very pleased about. And I've had a lot of fans over the last however many months ask me if the kids are going to get like a superhero name or if they're going to get human names or secret identities or any of that. So we're going to see that dealt with in this okay. issue as well. That would be cool. And what about this new threat, um, Blue, Blue Earth? Blue Earth, so I, I feel like writing Superman carries this, there's this weight of responsibility that comes with it that I take extremely seriously. I feel like it needs to deal with real issues. I mean, back to the very beginning, he was, you know, he was dealing with, you know, political corruption and, you know, you know, cops acting poorly or domestic violence. He was... He was dealing with like real stuff from the jump. Like, what if there was this guy who could just? It was really tough. He could fix everything. <laughs> that's, you know, and it's that tradition should continue, in my opinion. So, I uh, Blue Earth is about an isolationist, very anti-alien group that reacts very strongly to the presence of the War World refugees. So, in in a way, Superman's actions after War World Saga, in which he brought refugees back to Earth gave his enemies kind of an opening to to attack him from an ethical perspective like yeah Superman did the wrong thing and aliens don't belong here it's very isolationist kind of group that sometimes gets extremely violent and I think that's something that you know any idiot will recognize from you know the news current day and I love seeing the Superman family all working together so you kind of write all of the characters together which I love how does it feel writing all those together and what are the challenges well, the challenge is that there's a lot of them. <laughs> uh, so I, uh, I had to make a very deliberate... Um, I, I had to very clearly move characters to the foreground and background as we go. I can't give every single super character their time to have a, a, like a real development moment in every issue as we go. There has to be foreground, background kind of stuff, and they that kind of rotate through that. So we've already seen like Connor and Kenan kind of uh, becoming like bros, kind of having like the, the buddy cop kind of relationship where they're both kind of, they have an ego in the same sort of way and they, they're they playful but also kind of like jocks in the same sort of way. So seeing them bond over like video games and movies and like seeing Ken and learn in English and 
Connor learning how to be like a brother kind of. I don't know. It's just been really rewarding. I feel like the John Osel thing was really important. There's also beats. There's uh, there are real differences between Osel and Otho that I wanted to make more clear. Because Otho's always been protecting her younger brother. They call him the Super Twins, but really she's a year older. She's kind of been protecting him for a long time. Ways that has kind of, you know, left her kind of broken in some ways in a way that he is still kind of, you know, fun and hopeful and, yeah. you know, so we're going to see all that kind of kind of play out. I did love that moment with John Kent as well because we've seen it from Superman and Lois's perspective of what happened with John being away for so long and coming back at a completely different age, but we never really saw it from his perspective, so it was quite nice. Yeah, he's, he seemed like, he's like, yeah, I'm fine. He's, I think he even said it on the page somebody was like, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm really good. I, I'm <laughs> Got torture, whatever. <laughs> it's uh, I want to see the actual like maybe I'm not okay. You know I want to see what's what he's actually struggling with, and what that looks like coming from characters as as like kind and selfless as the the House of L. Yeah. So what else can you tell us about what's coming up for you on Action Comics or anything other Superman related? <laughs> <laughs> well, when does this air? <laughs> That's up to you. Uh, all right. Well. Uh, sadly, the current arc is going to be uh, my last on Action Comics, but um, there's also a lot I can't talk about yet. And if if fans uh, knew everything, like if I could, if I could, if I could tell everything, yeah. fans would not be upset. There's lots of lots of other really cool stories coming. Fans of my Superman work, fans of my other work in uh, the DC universe, um, but I will say I'm not done writing Superman anytime soon. Like I, Superman is my religion. I use Superman to teach my son what what his morals should be. I, you know, he he learns who the bad guys are by um, by me telling him about current events. We talk about things that are happening in the world in real life. He learns who the good guys are from Superman comics. Yeah. And using all the real life issues like the refugee thing, it's good because you can explain to your son and other others can explain to their children. Exactly what, what you're talking about. Yeah, I feel like I feel like bad guys in the story should be should not necessarily be. I mean, sometimes they can be, but they shouldn't. They shouldn't have to be one dimensional and very, like obvious. Like here's the big scary monster guy that hates humanity and wants to end end the world. Um, sometimes there have to be bad guys who are more complicated because they make. I mean, bad guys can be hard to spot sometimes. Yeah. You know, so I try to un, try to help my son understand that there are nuances in in good and bad. When it comes to being a good person, I I teach him his ethics, you know, rather than rather than church or other kinds of stories. I, I teach him the kind of person he wants to be through Superman. So I'm not done writing Superman anytime soon. Well, I'm sure I speak for everyone to say I am devastated you're leaving Action Comics, but excited to see what you're going to do next. Thank you. There's there's a lot more to come. So nobody nobody be too worried. Okay. And how about uh, John Stewart? What's going on in Greenland? Today? Oh man, it's. Well, that's gonna. There's no end in sight for that book. I uh, I love writing that book. The John Stewart character is an opportunity to, um, to flesh him out a little more fully. And a lot of people, to a lot of people out there, their John Stewart is the one for the animated show, and that was a great, it was a great rendition of him. But um, it's in the context of a team book. We didn't necessarily see him in all his complicated glory. We mostly get to know him as the ex marine. Um, is the the tough guy? He's kind of the tough guy. Of the team, and I always wanted to see more of his architecture background. I want to see more about his mother, who was his inspiration, uh, the civil rights leader who taught him what right looks like. Taught him uh, while the rest of the world was telling him to, you know, not attract attention to himself and be safe. He turn on the news and see his mom, you know, getting thrown in jail for doing the right thing and like being super badass. Um. And he's the one who took his mask off when he became a hero. He was like, I got nothing to hide. That comes from her influence. You know, this the, the distrust of, of vigilante justice. Um, so he's the consummate superhero. So I got to show all that in the page and see, uh, see, his, uh, see him interact with his mother, see this new threat that ties into my other work. So again, if you've been reading all my work up till now, you're going to want to read Green Lantern War Journal because there's huge connections that we'll see come up in later issues. Okay, cool. And how does it differ writing him versus Superman? Um, <laughs> they are both, you know, purely ethical people, for sure. 
but John is a little more complicated in his motives, a little more aggressive sometimes in the way he handles a problem. Whereas Superman, like Superman's power is only there, should only be there, in my opinion, to illustrate how incorruptible he is. Like, if you want to see a story about Superman kicking ass, there's like, this room is full of stuff, is full of characters who can do that. Okay. But in the Superman story, he doesn't just pound the robot and fly home or, you know, pound the bad guy, throw him in jail and leave. He's the one who applies the amount of force that he needs to to get it done and then checks to make sure that everybody's okay, including the bad guy, yeah. who checks up on the ex-con after he's out of prison. I'm you know? not seeing in the, at the beginning of the last issue where he's just checking on the convict. Uh -huh. And I think that's the character you named after yeah. somebody. Yeah, named after a friend <laughs> online, yeah. Um, that's, that's a great thing. No, thanks. John Stewart, I see him... I have, um, I have elements of... <laughs> The elements of my of my own character that I, that come out or coming out in the John story, okay. unbidden. Like I, uh, like um, uh, I'm a I'm a fighty guy. I'm told sometimes I like to fight a little bit, and I uh, I, I like to think of John as as being that way. I um, there's this, there's this thing that happens in the army where if you're about to fight or in the military in general, if a couple of guys are about to fight or uh, a fight is is brewing, um, one of them will take pull off their rank and throw it down, and the other one will do the same. So, like, if one if one guy is a master sergeant, the other guy is uh, a private or whatever, they get they take the rank off the table, and then they'll throw down. I see John is that guy too. Sometimes I'll be like, let's let's do this. Like John's got that I dare you kind of kind of aggression in him, not in a way that's unhealthy. Just he's just not afraid of shit, you know. So I like seeing that. I like seeing John like get tough on a guy sometimes. So we see that in issue one. We see it again in issue two. Probably pretty much every issue going forward, <laughs> we're going to see it in every uh, in, in some way. But he's also a brilliant mind. He's got somebody who's he's got a mind that's been, um, you know, just objecting to the constraints of three dimensional time and space since he was born. Like I want to, I want to, I want to build in ways that you know reality won't let me. My mind wants more than I than the tools I'm given. And so the ring comes along and gives him those tools to do anything, you know. So he he is kind of the the consummation of these all these different skills and talents. He's he's the tough guy. He's a brilliant thinker. He's compassionate, but not towards everyone. Compassion. He's extremely compassionate towards his mother, and has you know feelings of, of guilt and worry and all that about his his uh, his late sister and how it affected his mom and all that. Um. I don't know. They're different. It's hard to describe. They're both very virtuous, but they are very different too. Okay. And do you, is there a character that you haven't worked on yet from DC that you want to work on? From DC? Yeah, there's a lot actually. <laughs> a lot I've, I've gotten to do a little bit of Batman. I'd like to do more. There's a there's kind of a like a proper detective story I'd love to do. Um, Batman has a couple of villains I think are underserved that I would love to get my hands on. I think I think Scarface should be really scary and awesome. Um, I think Two Face is really great. As far as like a book, I would like to write. I think a Scarface book, like a Scarface feature book, would hold up yeah. in the right hands. Yeah. But that aside, I love to write Constantine. I've read every word Constantine spoken in the comic. Yeah, I love Constantine. I love the spooky guys, I like Spectre, I like Dead Man. Yeah. Uh, who else? I would love to do an Aquaman horror book. Um, yeah, I don't want to spoil it, but I, there's stuff. I mean, I love the Andromeda thing that Ron did with Aquaman. Yeah, I would love to do. There's a book that I had that I, that I had in my mind well before Andromeda became a thing um, that I would love to do still. I, I'd love, I mean, there's the world building potential for Atlantis is endless. Yeah. And you'll be really good at that because you're good at world building. Thank you. I would love to. Uh, that would be really fun. We'll, we'll end the list there for now. I, I could go on and on. Um. Is there a DC moment or whether it's TV, film, or comics that really strikes your memory? Just something that you always go back to? Yeah, in the original film, um, there's a moment like the, the helicopter scene. Superman. Yeah, the, the original Superman scene, uh, Superman film. Um, that's. I love that there's no ego in him. 
when he when he saves her, like his the smile he gives her is so like you know that's kind of funny. Like I'm I'm just your friend. I'm, yeah. I'm here to help. There's no it's not like I'm awesome. Yeah. Um, there's no aggression in him. Even when he's about to fight or straighten somebody out, like in the, in the second film too, where he's like uh, that. Would you like to step outside? Moment. Oh, yeah. You know, like. Oh God, I don't know. You know what? Tom Taylor said the exact same moment. Did he? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Great minds. Yeah. <laughs> let's see other. Let's see another moment. Um. God, there's a. I always go back to. I my mind's reeling with like a ton of them right now. I know it's a difficult question because there's so many great moments and things that Yeah. Um. I mean, it's kind of. In All Star Superman, the one that everyone talks about is the jumper scene. Yeah, that's that's certainly in the on the list. But I I think the one that stands out to me even more is um, where it shows him um, when he, he hears his dad's he hears that his dad's heart has stopped. Oh yes. And then he's he's racing to try to save. He's like, I can save him. I can do anything. Ah, he's like screaming and like his. His hair and cape, I think, are like burning from how fast he's going. That's such a powerful and emotional moment where he's like, he just refuses to accept that there's anything he can't do. So again, he is this. It's the perfect illustration of Superman, um, his absolute power. I mean, wielded with absolute compassion and humility, and like he's he wants to take this, you know, world ending power and use it to save this one man's life and he is he refused to accept that he can't do it and that's all, one of superman's biggest worries that he can't save everyone yeah yeah so that i thought to pick one moment i think it would be that one well enjoy your con and thank you for your time it's always great seeing you and you